Thank you very much. Uh, attend the CCT at the TCT AP 2020. So I would like to start our session. And uh, this session theme, scheme and team is a new aspect of CTO PCI strategy. So I we invite a whole excellent uh, CTO PCI operator. So uh, could you introduce the first speaker, Dr. Hiroki? Yes, thank you, Dr. Ojuchi. I will introduce the first speaker. Uh, first speaker is uh, Kenichiro Shimochi. Uh, his title is Fundamental Limitations of the Mechanical Guide Wire in CTO PCI. Dr. Shimochi, please. Thank you for introducing me. My talk is um, concerning about, uh, about my talk is about fundamental limitations of uh, mechanical guide wire in CTO PCI. Um, there are uh, several limitations of mechanical guide wires. And the first one is whipping, and the second one is uh, uh, deflection. So the, these two issues is uh, uh, really has a really priority. So I would like to focus on these two issues. The first one is uh, whipping. <laughs> whipping is, uh, as, uh, as is shown, we cannot break the rotating wire tip at the appropriate direction. Uh, that wire tip is over-rotated, over-rotated by whipping. And the uh, first reason for whipping is uh, core shape. Uh, the left panel is very next to two with round four, and the uh, right panel is near to six with a flat core. As you can see, uh, flat core is disadvantageous. The next reason, the, the other reason for whipping is bending moment at guide wire shaft and tip cap. As you can see, uh, with a bent root, uh, bent root uh, the wire uh, will be whipped, but the same wire with the straight root, uh, the wire uh, cannot, uh, whipping does not open like this. <clears throat> and the bending moment is a kind of internal stress, uh, which is generated when straight wire is bent into a knack. And uh, the bending moment equals uh, to be equals uh, to um, rigidity divided by a uh, radius of curvature. The higher uh, the rigidity is, the smaller the radius is, the larger internal stress uh, bending moment will be. And uh, in um, bent root, uh, we rotated the guide wire. When we rotate the guide wire like this, initially the center of rotation does not move like this. And then a uh, radius of curvature is constant until the wire tip is at this position. Therefore, bending moment is uh, constant as well. <laughs> and then um, the radius of curvature decreases because the center of rotation moves downward like this. Therefore, both bending moment and its reaction force increase. Reaction force starts to act as a resistance. I mean, uh, that is a break for guide wire tip rotation like this. And as radius of curvature decreases, both bending moment and its reaction force continues to increase until guide wire tip is uh, directed to the inverse normal vector here. And then uh, the wire tip uh, pass through the, the direction of the inverse normal vector uh, whipping occurs. And just after guide wire tip uh, pass through the direction of it, the first uh, normal vector direction, reaction force suddenly starts to act and exit. So this is a conceptual schema, uh, not uh, experimental uh, measurement or data or something like that. Um, initially, <coughs> break force increases like this, and suddenly, um, I mean, at the specific point of whipping, um, in, that is the inverse normal vector, uh, break suddenly changes into an axle and the top force released. And the gap depends on um, bending moment. So uh, the higher guide wire shaft rigidity is, 
the or the the smaller the radius of a curvature is the gap is larger and the guide wire easily bit this is a um, movie uh, left panel is two-dimensional and uh, right panel is the three-dimensional shaft curve and then please note that the, the at the reverse normal vector uh, the guide wire both guide wire uh, whips uh, whipping motion is occurred like this okay. <laughs> So, uh, the next issue is management of weight pin. <laughs> because of shaft curve just proximal to guide wire tip, we can predict that whipping motion will easily occur. So, which is better to rotate guide wire tip in this situation, count, count, uh, excuse me, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise? The answer is uh, counterclockwise uh, rotation is better because uh, counter, uh, excuse me, a clockwise rotated guide wire tip should be routed via the reverse normal vector before it is directed to the true movement. So uh, the guide wire will result in whipping there. <laughs> so uh, when there is a possibility of whipping, we should judge which direction is better to rotate, not to be routed via the specific point of whipping that is a reverse normal vector and uh, we should identify the direction of both normal and reverse normal vectors and geographical. And the next issue is now uh, tip diffraction. Tip diffraction is uh, uh, the first step is uh, F is uh, a force transmitted to the guide wire tip when we push the guide wire shaft. And then guide wire is received and from solid tissue at its tip curve. And then uh, F is redirected to T by N. This is diffraction. So in the large space, tip diffraction does not occur. <laughs> and um, several factors affect uh, how it is diffracted. Um, as you can see, a high, higher tip load uh, conquest pillow is, uh, tends to and go straight, advance straight. And then in contrast, uh, more flexible wire with a lower tip load than next to one, uh, easily deflect. And then the other factor is uh, tip length. Longer tip, <coughs> excuse me, longer tip lengths are more flexible with uh, more direction like this. Okay. So uh, various factors affect tip diffraction and uh, it is extremely difficult to predict and control, excuse me, the guide wire is uh, how, how guide wire tip diffracts. And guide wire manipulation utilizing tip diffraction is like this, and the guide wire tends to advance in a zigzag route because we cannot precisely deflect how it how tip it will be deflected. Therefore, we should repeatedly repeatedly dilute guide wire at 180 degree. And as long as guide wire penetration works. The diffraction of tip diffraction is limited on the oscillating plane on which both guide wire shaft and the tip curve are placed as well. And in contrast, when we apply the rotation to the guide wire to rotate it, so uh, guide wire tip escapes from the, the plane and it would be impossible to predict where the guide wire tip is diffracted. <laughs> So to control city wire, we should be familiar with both mechanisms of tip diffraction and basics of geometry concerning uh, space curve, three dimensional space curve. And this is the principle um, that is uh, the plane on which both guide wire tip curve and the shaft are placed is identical to the oscillating plane, which is spanned by a tangent vector and normal vector or a uh, guide wire route. Therefore, without applying torque to guide wire, its charging route will be constantly placed on the same plane. 
and this uh, tip curve does not escape from this plane. It means that uh, we can strictly limit the tracking curve of guide wire tip as uh, an two-dimensional curve on the same oscillating plane, even if unexpected tip deflection is generated. And the third issue is uh, about uh, semilunar space. And uh, this is a uh, difference between ablution and the penetration, especially uh, if there is a membrane in the layered structure, this CDO, uh, there is a need for penetration and uh, there is a need for or utilizing uh, tip diffraction. And uh, the problem is just after whipping of guide wire, there uh, is uh, uh, the, the big space will be uh, created and there is no oh, diffraction. It is really a problem. <laughs> because after making a big space around the guide wire tip, deflection does not occur. And uh, in such a situation, when we guide wire pushed, uh, it only sifts the membrane inst instead of uh, piercing, piercing it. And to overcome this situation, the second curve is needed to fix guide wire tip at the membrane and then deflect it by we see reactive force from member. However, second curve uh, sometimes makes it difficult to control its direction and reactive force, sometimes enlarges hematoma. The last issue is um, penetration force limitation of wire penetration force. Um, because of heterogeneous solidity of uh, the region, guide wire tip tends to be advanced to the direction where less solid. So we sometimes take true that um, guide wire with higher tip and uh, shaft rigidity is advantageous in controllability because of uh, its high torque and the penetration force. Actually, however, guide wire with high tip load and uh, shaft rigidity is uh, disadvantageous because it easily enlarges semi-luminous space by its shaft. So uh, in this summary, um, mechanical guide wire has uh, several limitations yet to be overcome. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> uh, thank you for very interesting lecture. Uh, we will have a, a Q&A for three minutes. Please give a uh, question and comment. So, doc, doc, Dr. Shimoji? Yes. So, how do you choose a guide wire? Do you refer some imaging? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's depending on the situation. <laughs> and uh, for now, for current situation, and mm -hmm. I he gave uh, <laughs> several limitations of kind of guide wires. So mm -hmm. there is uh, really less choice. Mm -hmm. So when we he, he manipulate the wire in a, a less solid tissue, mm -hmm. I, I choose a flexible uh, layer next to one or something like that with a low well, tip load. And I, he selects the <laughs> wires depending on the situation, um, of course, including imaging findings. Do, 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 do you refer the IBAS image in the, uh, for choosing the wire mm. in the, during the CTO procedure? Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, for example, there are a big hematoma. Yeah. Uh, mm less flexible wire such as a compressed probe or something like that will be chosen. Did any other uh, comment or uh, questions? So the initial uh, selection of the CD wire, did you uh, leave as a CT image? For me? Oh, yeah. Right. right. Um, <laughs> not always. Not always. Not always. <laughs> not always. Uh, but uh, uh, well, we, 
city findings suggest that the city of Prague is relatively soft and uh, bending. There is a bending. Um, I choose the, the uh, guy next to one or two as a, the first wire because uh, it is really flexible to overcome it. But it usually looks soft, it's not always soft. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So in yeah. the city findings, yeah. looks very soft, yeah. soft tissue. That's but right. uh, actually, guide wiring is sometimes very difficult, right? That's right. This is that's real. That is perfect, yeah. <clears throat> OK, thank you very much. So we move to the next speaker, Dr. Hasega. So the importance of perpendicular projection of the guide wire manipulation. So Dr. Hasega, please. And thank you for the opportunity to speak, to speak here today. My topic is about perpendicular projections for guide wire manipulation. As a background, during PCI procedure, understanding of the optimal working angle is important. Especially in city wiring, accurate information about perpendicular projection is a key to success. However, the concept of perpendicular projections has been commonly misunderstood. In this presentation, I'd like to reconsider the concept of perpendicular projections. First of all, let me check the terminology. VE means the vector of target vessel axis. Although curved vessels are sometimes observed in our clinical settings, today we treat just straight segment of the target vessel. As you know, VE of mid RCA segment two is usually deep caudal direction. In other words, the target can be seen a dot or a small circle from this direction if C arm could be movable around here. This slide shows CTO wiring. As you can see, target region is a diagonal branch and the guide wire is not inside the target lumen. In order to confirm the wire position and target direction, the operator uses these bilateral uh, coronary angiograms. One is RL15 cranial 43, and the other RL52 cranial 26. The operator believes these angiograms provide perpendicular images. However, this is not the case. Let me describe the direction of areocranial view from short axis view, from V view. As you can see, uh, target uh, segment is a small circle and the wire is attached to it. The direction corresponding to areo 15 cranial 43 is indicated by white arrow here, this uh, direction. At the same time, the direction corresponding to LAO 52 cranial 26 is indicated by this yellow arrow. From VE projection, the opening angle between two projection is uh, not 90 degrees, but only 56 degrees. That's why these bilateral angiograms are not optimal in this situation. This image is an illustration of the globe. In the terrestrial globe, latitude and longitude are defined like this. Latitude is equivalent to cranial to caudal position and longitude uh, RAO and LAO position. I would like to use this analogy of the globe to describe the angiographic perpendicular view. 
Suppose the Earth's axis is equal to a target vessel from any position on the equator. This target can be observed without any shortenings. We can easily comprehend these combination of vectors are perpendicular views, projections. Of course, there are countless numbers of combination which provide perpendicular projections on the equator, like this. In the clinical settings, these combinations are not always available, not only because CM cannot cover all the direction, but also because guiding caster or something else interfere with the full image. Under such situations, projections from these narrow arrows provide similar information about the wire position and target direction. This idea is oblique views. Here, let me check the terminology again. Penet penetration plane is defined as a certain plane from which both target and the guide wire are overlapping each other, like this slide. PPV alpha means oblique penetration plane view. Uh, PPV zero exists on the penetration plane, and it is orthogonal vector to VE, vessel axis. And PPV alpha means one of the oblique penetration plane views, and the alpha is the value of deviation from PPV zero. What is important in this slide is guide wire and the target are always overlapping each other as long as each vector of projection is on the penetration plane, like this. Ethos movies can be shown here. Suppose the microcaster is target. CM is moving from PPV0 to PPV alpha and PPV0 to PPV minus alpha. As you can see, VE and guide wire keep, keep overlapping each other during this movement, like this. Objective perpendicular plane view is described here. As you can see, VE exists on this plane, objective perpendicular plane, and OPV is also perpendicular to penetration plane. From this plane, the operator is able to confirm the accurate distance between the target and the guide wire. And OPV beta is means uh, deflected OPVs. OPV zero exists on the uh, OPV plane, and it is also orthogonal to a PPV. Beta is the value of deviation from OPV zero to OPV beta. What is important in this slide is absolute distance between uh, guide wire and the target is maintained as long as uh, these vectors are on the OPV. In this slide, D0 equal D beta equal D beta minus, uh, D minus beta. Ethos movies are shown here. 
Suppose the microcaster is target. CRM is moving from OPV0 to OPV beta and OPV minus beta. As you can see, the distance between guide wire and VE is maintained during CR motion. The relationship between VE and PPV penetration plane and object on plane objective perpendicular view is essential for the understanding of perpendicular views. And the concept of PPV alpha and OPV beta is also important. Let me go back to the terrestrial globe from anywhere on the zero degree longitude. The guide wire uh, the target are overlapping each other like this. And for example, PPV 20 degrees and OPV minus 40 degrees are considered perpendicular, even though the opening angle is not 90 degrees. It is true, confirming perpendicular projection is a key to success of CTO wiring. There still remain some limitations and problems. First, information about VE and perpendicular view is obtained from CT angiogram. However, there is some discrepancy between the data from CT image and those from angiogram. In order to identify the VE from coronary angiogram alone, some mathematical processing is needed. Practical application of this process is required in the future. Second, cardiac motion and the movement of diaphragm have a certain influence on basal axis and perpendicular projection. And this ratio shows VE motion during a cardiac cycle. VE motion is a total of parallel motion and rotational motion. For example, if the target is located in RCA segment 2, the VE deviates about 17 degrees during one cardiac cycle. V motion varies depending on the segment. For example, if the target is located in segment three, V moves about 18 degrees during a cardiac cycle. That is why stabilizing the angiographic image is needed for optimal wire manipulation. And third, this is the most important issue. To confirm the perpendicular projection is one thing, and to navigate a guide wire intentionally towards the target is quite another. In order to reach the target, wire advancing brand new apparatus is needed. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for your interesting uh, lecture. So is it? Yeah, yes. thank you for a nice lecture. So as everybody can know, so, the so Nakamura Sensei's lecture is always difficult to understand. So, so this is the anyway the some kind of a 3D wiring system, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, but uh, the, uh, more easy to uh, uh, easier to understand. So uh, anyway, so the uh, I usually the uh, coronary machine uh, using the biplane mode. So the uh, if we uh, fully understand uh, your lecture's concept, so I think uh, a biplane system is uh, more easy to apply uh, your uh, some concept of the uh, wire manipulation. So the is there uh, other uh, or further uh, things to uh, consider in the setting of a uh, uh, biplane uh, CNG machine? Uh. Biplane seamassing is useful only when the uh, uh, VE is on 
cranial to caudal. Uh -huh. uh, it is not、uh, effective for、uh, if、uh, V is、uh, left side to right side.、Uh, yeah. uh, so, v i b r a n system is not always effective.、Mm. Uh, Your question is a very important issue for <laughs> yes, this wire、yes. uh, manipulation. The CM movement is limited, very limited. So that's why the biplane mode is sometimes biplane CM is,、uh, cannot be coexisted. So the, sometimes single plane is very useful to、mm. see the perpendicular view. Anyway, the, but the concept is very important to、mm. put the two planes. Mm, good, good. Any other question? Okay, because of time limitation, to hear Dr. Hiroki, could you please introduce the、uh, third speaker? Yes. Next speaker is Dr. Matsuno.、Uh, his title is The New Concept of Guide Wire Manipulation in CTO PCI. Dr. Matsuno, please. Thank you very much, Hyo Kim Sensei.、Uh, I'm Shusuke Matsuno from Japan.、Uh, first, I'd like to apologize for attending with a mask on because I'm in the cat lab、uh, in the room next to the cat lab. So, anyway, I really appreciate your kind invitation to this meeting. I'd like to talk about a new concept of guide warrior manipulation in CTO PCI. This is our disclosure slide. Guide wire crossing is the most important part in CTO PCI, of course, but guide wire needs to be advanced to the digital true lumen within a 3D blinded space under 2D angiographic guidance, which is the reason why guide wire crossing is very challenging. Guide wire manipulation under two perpendicular angiographic projections And guide wire navigation method represented by the 3D wiring method have been attempted to overcome this difficulty. This is the illustration of the very famous Okamura Sensei 3D wiring method. This 3D wiring method has been adopted in some population and has been reported to facilitate guide wire crossing in CTO PCI. However, when you see this illustration, You can find this methodology is based on the precondition that the axis of guide wire, guide wire shaft, distal true lumen, and head foot axis of the patient or axis of IBUS catheter are all parallel. In this condition, rotation of guide wire tip can be easily understood in two dimensional way. But have you encountered this ideal situation in daily clinical practice? Unfortunately, guide wire shaft and view angle direction are sometimes inclined, often inclined to the distal true lumen. For example, let's consider the situation where the view angle is parallel, but the guide wire shaft is inclined to the distal true lumen, like this animation. Because in this part,、uh, because the guide wire tip is facing a seven o'clock direction. Operators will rotate the guide wire tip clockwise、uh, according to the conventional 3D wiring method. However, as clearly shown in this animation, the guide wire tip、uh, behaves rather like moving away from the distal true lumen by clockwise rotation and won't be directed to the target even by 90 degree rotation, clockwise rotation. As you can see, when the guide wire shaft is inclined to the distal true lumen, it is very difficult to intuitively know how guide wire tip behaves and which direction to rotate guide wire. Moreover, 3D wiring method just shows us which direction to rotate guide wire tip and doesn't guarantee that guide wire will actually reach the distal true lumen. If the guide wire tip is directed to the target as suggested, we can't exactly predict or control degree and direction of su subsequent guide wire tip direction, deflection. Furthermore, even if the direction of the guide wire tip is the same, guide wire, guide wire trajectory、uh, can go any direction of 360 degree in the CTO segment based on the three dimensional positioning. Positional relationships between the guide wire shaft and tip. 
as a result, it is very, very, very difficult or even impossible to instantly understand the 3D movement of guide wire tip during guide wire manipulation. In addition, as Shimoji Sensei uh, uh, emphasized, mechanical guide wire has fundamental limitations such as whipping, tip deflection, uh, semi lunar space creation, and lack of penetration efficiency, which makes guide wire control in 3D CPO segment more difficult. Accordingly, a new guide wire manipulation method has been eagerly awaited. If 3D guide wire control can be converted to 2D wire control on properly set angiographic views, guide wire crossing becomes simpler and more re reproducible. First, I'd like to talk about setting of appropriate perpendicular angiographic projections. When the vessel axis runs parallel to head foot axis of the patient, midline of the patient, for example, in mid RCA CTO, it is easy to find two perpendicular projections such as AP and RL90 or RL30 and LL60. However, vessel axes are mostly inclined in three dimensional way to head foot axis of the patient in clinical settings. How can we detect perpendicular projections in such a situation? The first step is to detect vessel vector of the target, target segment by using vector projection method. As the angiography is a projection of 3D coronary artery, vessel vector of short segment of CTO segment or distal lumen can be conversely reconstructed from two angiographic images. First, planes are inserted to the target segment on randomly selected two angiographic projections. And then vessel vector of the target segment can be detected as a straight line where two planes intersect behind a screen. After detection of vessel vector of the target segment, a plane containing the vessel vector is firstly set up and named as penetration plane, a blue plane in this illustration. And then another plane also containing the vessel vector and being orthogonal to the penetration plane is set up a green plane in this illustration. Here, horizontal view of the penetration plane is defined as penetration plane view, PPV. On the other hand, horizontal view of the green plane is defined as objective perpendicular view, OPV. In the penetration plane method, all we have to do is to manipulate guide wire on the penetration plane. On the PPV, we need to advance guide wire to keep guide wire tip and adjacent guide wire shaft like straight line. On the other hand, uh, on the OPV, we need to check guide wire tip direction and distance from tip uh, to the target and to change guide wire tip direction if needed. By using this method, we can convert 3D guide wire control to 2D wire control on the plane, uh, on the plane and guide wire control can be simplified. This slide shows the rationale for the penetration plane method. As the plane formed by the guide wire tip and the adjacent guide wire shaft is identical to the oscillating plane of the guide wire track curve, tip deflection will occur on the same plane as long as tip direction deflection has not been tip direction has not been changed by rotation. Therefore, if the guide wire tip direction is controlled to keep on the plane, we can keep the guide wire on the plane and control guide wire track curve as a plane curve. That means 2D wire control becomes feasible on the penetration plane. For the training of the penetration plane method, we have an in vitro training model. In this cube model that simulates a CTO segment, a start point and start point and goal are set. First, a thin plane is inserted to contain a red line that meets a vessel vector of the CTO segment. Here, this cross section is the penetration plane. Horizontal view of this plane is PPV, and the view vertical to the penetration plane is OPV. As mentioned earlier, we need to advance guide wire to keep 
guide wire course like straight line on PPV and need to check and change the guide wire tip direction on the OPV. This slide shows pictures of the training model. Here are starting point and a removable target marker. If we manipulate guide wire using randomly selected perpendicular views such as AP and LEO 90, wiring to the target is very, very difficult and time consuming, taking a lot of try and error. I actually experienced at the beginning of this year, but it was very difficult and took a lot of time. However, after setting up with the PPV and OPV, guide wire navigation line can be set in our mind and guide wire can be confidently advanced on the penetration plane using the manipulation method I talked about earlier. However, after setting up the PPV and OPV, uh, sorry, but in the clinical setting, calculate PPV and OPV, uh, so-called PPV zero and OPV zero, uh, sometimes out of movable range of the CR. To overcome this limitation, oblique views are needed. Oblique PPV, PPV alpha, and oblique OPV, LPV beta, are both oblique to the vessel vector and are on the green and blue line, respectively. Oblique PPV uh, and oblique OPV are not geometric, geometrically orthogonal each other. Uh, but are defined to be orthogonal as two planes formed by vessel vector and two oblique views are orthogonal. Here, penetration plane, a blue plane, and green plane is uh, orthogonal. By bringing in this concept of orthogonality in CTO PCI, oblique PPV and oblique OPV can be used as an alternative to PPV0 and OPV0. Concretely, the distance from the guide wire tip to the distal true lumen is the same between OPV and oblique OPV. And we can also check if the guide wire course is keeping a straight line on oblique PPV. Therefore, we can get the same information from oblique PPV and oblique OPV as PPV0 and OPV0, respectively. Use of this, uh, these oblique views can expand the application of the penetration plane method in daily clinical practice. In conclusion, conventional guide wire navigation methods have some critical limitations and thus it doesn't sufficiently contribute to reliable guide wire control with, within 3D CTO segment. Penetration plane method using two orthogonal planes containing the vessel the vector of vessel axis of the CTO segment enables 2D guide wire control and makes guide wire crossing simpler and re more reproducible. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for a nice lecture. Please give a comment uh, or question. Thank you for explaining how difficult 3D wiring. So uh, in your model, so which wire is best uh, and uh, in the critical practice, because this model is a homogeneous model, but uh, in real the CTO segment, there are several, uh, uh, the hardness, stiffness are different in the CTO segment. So in this, in this uh, uh, real, real uh, procedure, which guide wire do you recommend? Thank you very much uh, for your very important comment. Mm -hmm. So the, we, we operators only select guide wire, but mm -hmm. they can't select the uh, characteristic of the CTO segment. Mm -hmm. So that's a very big uh, limitation. And uh, as my answer, uh, that any guide wire, any mechanical guide wires have fundamental limitation, for example, mm -hmm. weeping or uh, uh, inadequate penetration efficiency. That's why we need uh, another weapon, mm -hmm. uh, as, as I think uh, Dr. Nasu will talk about that. Mm. Just uh, we expect uh, <laughs> now.
Yes. So any wire has limitations, I think. So and another one thing is that the battery is uh, has a coverage. So sure. Uh, so do you need a uh, do we need a, a wire change in the segment? Same yes. by segment by segment. Uh, based, based on your uh, concept? <laughs> of, of course, the, yeah. uh, the answer is yes, but this mm. concept is uh, should be applied for the short segment penetration, uh, yeah. and uh, even if the long segment CTO. Uh, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. So the, in clinical mm. setting, we have to mm. use uh, several wires mm. to clear the long segment CTO. Mm. Okay, Dr. So, Matsuno, yeah. Yeah, so I, I also have a question. So thank you for a nice lecture. So thank you very much. I have similar uh, uh, questions, uh, uh, some issued by the uh, Dr. Ojuji. So the, uh, in the application of long CTO, so the usually the long CTOs, every point of the vectors is a different way, right? So the, if that, uh, uh, how can you or application of the, or how can you find the, some uh, penetration plane? So it means the uh, uh, every each millimeters, sometimes a different vector or different penetration. So, but uh, uh, how can, if, if that case is, a, how can we apply uh, the, your uh, concept and your uh, plane um, strategy? Thank you very much. Very good, uh, very good, very important comment. So if the CTO vessel is, CTO segment is short and straight, the story is very simple. Mm -hmm. But as you questioned, uh, the, if the CTO segment is long or tortuous, it is difficult to imagine uh, the application of this uh, method. But uh, for a long segment CTO, we have to advance guide wire uh, with a conventional wiring method uh, up to the uh, 10, 10 millimeters or something left to the distal gap. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the identify the vessel axis of the, from the guide wire tip to the distal gap, and then apply this penetration plane method for the, uh, the residual 10 millimeter CTO segment. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you very much. So because of time limitation, Thank you. I'd like to move to last speaker, Dr. Ken Yanas. What is the next weapon for CTO PCI? Dr. Nas, please. Thank you very much. So the, I want to talk about the, the plasma mediated ablation system as a, a next weapon for the CTO PCI. So in this presentation, all new medical devices, uh, I'm sorry, is not approved the, all over the world, but the uh, uh, logic is based on the uh, mathematical uh, uh, strategy. So the plasma is the uh, uh, is a, has a high energy. Uh, the that we can explain in the, this slide uh, the plasma. So when you can imagine the very easily the like uh, water. So the solid state of the water is ice, and the liquid state of the water is water. And the gas state uh, of the uh, water is a uh, water gas. Now, when we put the high energy uh, to the uh, water gas, so at the very high temperature, with the stars atoms lose the, their electrons. The mixture of the electrons and the nuclei that result in the plasma state of the matter. So the plasma uh, phase is a uh, energy is very high. So the plasma is a uh, mainly the three stage. So when we put the electro, uh, we put the bolt energy to the electrode. So the streamer is uh, started. Uh, so, uh, in the streamer phase is a uh, low activity and a low temperature, but the dielectric breakdown has been occurred. We can see the spark like a thunder. Thus, in the spark states, is a uh, uh, the activity is high, but the temperature is low. But we have put the more energy to the electrode, so we can see the continuous uh, spark, and uh, we can make it a very high temperature and the uh, reactivity. So when we put the more, uh, energy to the electrode, you can see the some bubble is here. Uh, inside the, this bubble, we call the, this one is the vapor layer. 
inside the vapor layer is the included vapor layer included uh, uh, plasma. But uh, the direct uh, electric breakdown has been occurred. You can see the spark like a thunder. So in the first generation of the plasma wire system, so we use the spark uh, model uh, to create the connection between the two electrodes, mainly the retrograde approach like this. So uh, this uh, uh, stage of the uh, plasma wire is that uh, we use a very higher energy so that we can ablate the calcification. Uh, this we use the eggshell uh, as a uh, calcification calcified disease. So we put the aberration in between the two electrodes. So you can see the very clear hole is the eggshell. So the uh, this plasma energy can ablate the uh, calcification. So we already done in the uh, past in man in the past generation of the plasma wire system. So we experienced the seven cases. Mainly we used this system in the red blade approach. So I showed one case. This is a very calcified subtotal occlusion. But the first uh, guide wiring from the undergrade side it has been failed. So uh, we use the red blade approach for decolorize the discalcified sub subtotal occlusion. So in the CT findings, you can see the full moon calcification in the middle of the RCA. So we put the uh, uh, two electrodes from the antigrade and the retrograde sites, and I put the plasma energy several times. So the finally, the, we can make it a uh, 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 connection between the two electrodes. So after connection, after making the connection, uh, XTR easily to pass uh, inside the connection. But the region is very hard, so any balloon could not be passed. So finally, we need to do the root operation to treat the, this region. So in our CT, uh, I was findings after root operation, you can see the napkin ring signed here. So this is after ballooning, and this is the final shot. So, however, the, the, in this uh, method, it's very e not easy to uh, use the inner integrated approach. So, the, maybe in this, uh, the, like this schema, is created uh, uh, the entry, uh, the entry zone is not always uh, easy. So, the, we change to the uh, Spark uh, model to the Streamer model. In the streamer model, uh, I already mentioned the streamer phase is a little bit lower uh, reactivity and lower temper temperature. So energy is low, is the temperature low. And also that we can make it the operation only around the chip of the guide wire. Uh, this is a chip of the electrode. So we, when we put the energy to the electrode, so uh, we can make it uh, uh, vapor layer around here. Uh, inside of the vapor layer, the plasma can be uh, uh, operated uh, as the sclerotic regions. So, and also we should control the plasma power. So we use the very high uh, voltage in the past generation. Uh, in this uh, movie that you can see the bump and also that you can see the, the movement of the chip of the guide wire. So that means that the, uh, the position of the guide wire chip is not stable. However, in the second generation of the plasma wire, the current system, that you can see the some lights, so like a machine gun, but the chip of the guide wire is always stable. So that means in that we can operate it appropriately using the, this uh, streamer uh, phase of the plasma mediated operation system. So now the, this is a current system, the plasma wire. So we are finalizing in the system and maybe we uh, we started the uh, clinical trial uh, in Japan in uh, this year. So almost the system is almost same as a single wire system. So the plasma wire is a, uh, designed uh, disabling the Gaia family, the chip load is 3.5 and 5 gram. And the plasma catheter designed the disassembling the core pro, but the different point is that those two uh, uh, devices have the uh, electrode. This is the bipolar system. 
And also, the, we need to the heartbeat synchronized angiogram to uh, uh, safer procedure in the plasma media operation system. Because everybody knows the heartbeat is one of the biggest matter for the guide wiring in the city of PCI. And also, Dr. Masno already mentioned is a, to detect the best vector, is a, this angle is very important. So the, uh, when we see the uh, moving the uh, coronary angiogram, uh, to detect the accurate uh, vessel vector is very difficult. So the always vessel is, uh, vessel is dancing. So the heart rate synchronized angiography is required. So nowadays uh, we quite often use the 7.5 frame per second uh, to make it the angiogram. So the, this is the usual, maybe you can see that this um, angiogram usually. But the uh, uh, angiogra uh, angiographic image is acquired at the estimated timing and the diagnostic in one before the RR interval in the, in the synchronized angiogram. So the synchronized angiogram, so background is moving, but the coronary is almost stopped. So that we can change, that we can check the, the direction of the guide wire is uh, uh, more accurately. So now that we use a simulated coronary CTO region designed by the multi CT data for training, so we can make it a various pattern of the CTO region uh, in the heartbeat uh, model. So the so one case is that you can see that this is the CTO, the very bending is the very difficult one. So that we can make it the CTO model from the very easy one to the difficult one. So I want to introduce the flow of the plasma-mediated operation procedure with the heartbeat synchronized navigation system. So anyway, uh, Dr. Matsuno mentioned that we uh, uh, should detect the vessel vector and uh, check the uh, uh, PPV and OPV on the orbit map and uh, set the uh, plasma wire uh, in the synchronized angiogram. And also, the, we can check the wire direction from the uh, objective perpendicular view. So these two view is very important to decide the wire uh, control. So this is the heartbeat uh, synchronized angiogram. So the CTO segment is almost stopped. And also, uh, we can check the uh, wire position from the objective perpendicular view. So you can see the almost wire is uh, reaching the, the distal cap of the CDO. And uh, uh, finally, the, we, can, uh, we can check the, the, we can confirm that the wire has been crossed to the CDO region. So the, this is a summary of the, this uh, presentation, the, this session. The mechanical guide wire has a fundamental limitations such as whipping, Therefore, intentional guide wire control is not easy in the CTO regions. So detection of the perpendicular view is the first step to understand the course of the CTO region or distal to lumen. The result of the calculation that to detect the perpendicular view often shows the unrealistic CM projection. So after detection of the best vector, you can select the barriers per perpendicular view set, uh, like a uh, oblique view. So guide wire should be advanced on the penetration plane. The guide wire navigation software showed you the way you should go. So hard with synchronized angiogram system can provide the static picture of the coronary angiography. And I believe the main limitation of the mechanical guide wire may be dissolved by the plasma mediated ablation systems. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Very very interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much. When, when do you think this system is available? Uh, I think it, in Japan it's 2024 or 2025. Oh, okay, okay. So it is only available in the sinus rhythm? Uh, yes, of course, with uh, the heartbeat okay. synchronized system, we can use only the si uh, si uh, patient with the sinus rhythm. Hmm. So, because the RR interval is a different yeah, yeah, in the yeah. uh, so, F. <laughs> we, uh, we, have to, we don't have to make a PVC. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's Thank enough. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Big, big, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. That's enough. Also, uh, as for the plasma system and also the uh, some lectures uh, of uh, uh, the uh, other uh, uh, lecturers uh, give us the, some manipulation or uh, some plane of the uh, uh, CTO segment. So the, uh, I, I, I don't understand why in plasma system is uh, some uh, plane is important. Mm. It means uh, wow. uh, it's not always easy to find. So mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the first merit of the plasma system, so even though the some uh, plane was not uh, diff different, but mm. uh, finally we can uh, make the uh, revascularized plane. So the, mm. uh, even though the, uh, you gave us the, some importance of the, uh, some plane, in the application of the plasma system, so what's uh, the I, I think it, uh, in, in, it's also in, not important but uh, uh, useful for use for uh, use for using the uh, plasma mediated abrasion because is the uh, so guide even uh, in, even though the uh, plasma wire plasma wire is also mechanical wire so the, mm -hmm. the mechanical uh, plasma wire is also has a, a same limitation as uh, as a uh, mechanical wire mm -hmm. so but uh, uh, plasma wire it has a different power mm -hmm. so the plasma power that can abrade the the uh, atherosclerotic region just front of the tip of the guide wire mm -hmm. so so when we can set the penetration plane Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can go to on the, uh, we can control the wire on the plane. Mm -hmm. So finally, we can achieve the, the distal to lumen. Mm -hmm. So the I wanna uh, simply we wanna simplify the, the procedure. The guide wiring is not we don't need to the three dimensional guide wiring. Mm -hmm. So our guide wiring is a two dimension just uh, on the plane. Right. Okay. So we wanna simplify the guide wiring in the CTO segment. Mm -hmm. So that this method is only just a uh, uh, final uh, re-entry around mm -hmm. the distal cap of CTO. So, so the last presentation that we you talked about the uh, long segment of the CTO. That this mm -hmm. is a, a total different uh, strategy mm -hmm. we need. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much. So, Dr. Hiroki, please give us a closing remark. Yeah, it's time to close this session. All present and panels, thank you for your contribution for this session. See you next time. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very okay. much. See you face to face. See you. See you. Thank you. Always be good. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye.